night. Hey, welcome to another edition of Run Buck on Games. I'm Run Buck. Got another war recap for you. This time taking a look at what should have been an undefeatable clan, Real Hempstead. And I say that because the alignment of town halls was slated so heavily in their favor. We didn't have any town hall 11s. They had seven, three of which were dot five, ten dot fives. Uh, town hall not tens, we had nine, they had 13. Two of ours were dot fives, six of theirs were dot fives, and then the remainder, 23 and 19, were the Town Hall 9s. So that basically gave them plus seven attackers, or no, wait, plus seven, yeah, plus seven super nukes, as I call them. When Town Hall 11s attack, they're super nukes in my mind, the most powerful in the game, or were, as we look at this a little bit more deeply. And then uh, they had plus four in the nukes category from Town Hall 10. So that's uh, seven plus four, 11 times two to 22 attacks that were stronger than ours in, a, in an overall war of 30 on 30. Yikes. But uh, what ended up happening was interesting, I think, of an exa as an example of the meta that we're seeing in the game now. Town Hall 11, their Town Hall 11 attacks, let's look at the percent success rate. They had 50% overall super nuke success rate. And of that, none of them were successful on pure play Town Hall 10s. Only their nukes on 9.5s were successful. Now, some of that might have been ability, but I think it was, it's the meta. Because keep in mind, Town Hall 10 and Town Hall 11 are just now beginning to get in place. They upgraded on bomb towers. It's not even going to be done for probably another 30 days. Teslas, Expos for the Town Hall 11s. It's going to get worse, folks. And so this percentage you're seeing on the super nukes on 10 will get probably drop a little bit more or for very, you know, if it's an ability problem, even for more talented clans, you'll see a lower percentage in history, I believe. And then their Town Hall 10 nuke success was 73%, 8 out of 11. And then their Town Hall 9 peer, they had, uh, where's that at? Out of 24 attacks at Town Hall 9, uh, they got 12 three stars. So the days of slap it down and Town Hall 9 is just rolling threes out like it's a machine, not and not anymore. Not anymore. So again, I think this is one of the greatest balance changes that Supercell's ever done. In effect, they've made engineering clans somewhat moot for against you know t clans like JTJ Main that have reasonable talent. It's really not much of an advantage anymore. It might be a disadvantage. Uh, but if you have a lot of talented players in your engineering clan, then it's really, you're just basically engineering against engineering. You know, why would you engineer then at all? Uh, but anyway, let's take a look. I digress for a little while, but, you know, they, they called, they told us after the war that it was their B team. So I felt I had to clarify. Oh, and the other thing that they said was that great job by our Town Hall 9, but our Town Hall 10s were meh. And I was like, seriously? Our Town Hall 10s had, uh, where's that stat? We had one ta we had one Town Hall 10 actually three peer attacks on uh, Town Hall 10, and one was a hit up from Town Hall 9 into Town Hall 11. So I thought our Town Hall 10s and 11s did pretty well. And let's take a look at those. I'll show you one of them. So first off, oh, Reload the game. And while we're doing that, I'll fire up Epic Pen here. Because we can't go anywhere without Epic Pen. And we're good. All right, so we'll go here to the war log. Whoops, wrong war. Oh, my God. Here we go. I'm going to have to record all this over. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Too much time. Too much time. All right, so here we go. Uh, we had... Uh, a few attacks, a lot of voting. Seven attacks were nominated. But the one we'll start with is actually the hit up that I talked about. Chezcheck was able to two star, 71%, so good percentage as well. And he's a Town Hall 9 on their number two Town Hall 11. So let's go ahead and take a look at that to start. See what we see. We'll go four times speed to begin with. Um, Kind of get a sense for the attack, and you and you know, granted, anytime you're doing a hit up, he's just trying to get the percentage, and then drive in. And and this kind of highlights a point we've been telling our clanmates: is like 
Really, Town Hall 11 and Town Hall 10 should no longer be running anti-3 bases because the defenses now are so strong at Town Hall 10 and 11 that an anti-2 base can hold off an anti-3. It used to be the anti-2 bases were weaker to sustain pushes by, you know, like healers or other type attacks where, or like a minor, mass minor, because the defenses were so spread you didn't have a concentrated amount of DPS to take out the force. But now, uh, I'm thinking... You don't need to have these, and you're basically you no longer have to give away a, a two star on a hit up, which you see here. And what was interesting as well is what made this hit up even better was that two of our Town Hall tens tried to beat the percentage that Chess Check got, couldn't do it. So it looks simple. Let's look at it one more time. I mean, he's he's basically nibbling. I mean, the nibbling you can pre-plan out. You can very you can get down detail and say, all right, there's no air defense here, so I'm gonna use minions, which he did, and then he goes up top, does the same thing. The edge cleaning is you can be well thought out, but the drive timing is I think where his percentage was a little different and how he got it to flow. Now some of that's luck by the fact that his I think his bowlers by swinging wide gave him a little bit more over here, right? And then he got that final tower. But either way, great attack by Jack One, Jack Two, as I like to say. Um, Something I don't think we'll be seeing much of once the bases catch up with the new meta. You will no longer see any of these edge-exposed town halls. You will have very difficult to reach town halls in the core, uh, trying to use moats and other things to try to stop them. So I think hit-ups will become very rare. The next hit we want to take a look at was actually Red Ace on their number eight. Um, he got a three start. It was a six hit on this base. Um, town Hall 9 versus a Town Hall 9.5. Um, let's see here. So a little bit of a hit up actually, right? There he is. A little bit of a hit up. He's got a little bit more defenses. As you can see here, he's got a Town Hall 10, so, but not, no Infernos. Uh, he doesn't have the second Expo. It does have the Bomb Tower, but you could have that at 9. So, yeah, and his, his heroes were kind of more like Max. So it really feels like a Town Hall 9. He might have some extra bombs. We'll have to see as we watch the play out. But it, what... What uh, Ace ends up doing is just basically a two-go whiz with the clear and the clutter, and then he uh, drives in with a mass Valk followed by a Royals Bowler push, and then had Wizards on the cleanup, and it really worked out for him. Now, some of this was luck. I mean, this this uh, Tesla being buried and then that guy coming back around, those are things that you can't really anticipate, but it ended up flowing pretty nicely for him. But, you know, sixth attack, six attack. Again, the meta on Town Hall 10 and Town Hall 11 and Town Hall 9 just so well tweaked by Supercell we're gonna see a lot of wars where Town Hall 9 is once again in play that there's actually open bases and, and let's I might take take a look were there any open bases on our side just for funsies I did not do this before the pre-recording to see but let's take a look I don't remember so this is where our Town Hall 9 start number 8 wait this is our side yeah wait that's right and so, nope, they, they did three opens. So they had three opens, even though of their Town Hall 10 nukes, I didn't mention this, their Town Hall 10 nukes of 73%, 8 of 11, they never did with their Town Hall 10's appear attack. None of their Town Hall 10 attacks, of which they had 13, including their 9.5s, none were used to hit peer. Wow, right? Or maybe more accurately, none were used to hit peer that actually ended up being the scoring hit. So, man, this is a great example, uh, I think, this war. That's why I'm kind of belaboring the point. Not so much to beat on real Hempstead, but to rather say this is a huge example of how the balancing changes, which are now just beginning to come out. I mean, it's going to get worse. The balancing changes have really made it difficult for engineering clans that are clans. I mean, Hempstead said they weren't engineered, but any time you've got what we call engineered is where you have uh, a lot of Town Hall 11s that are underdeveloped, but with the Warden up to at least level 5, and they had that going on. And then you have a lot of, not, anytime you have a lot of dot five bases in your in your clan, which they had, uh, what did they have, 9 total dot fives versus R2. So once you start pushing those ratios really high, you're really kind of skewing how the matchmaking system is going to find stuff for you. But enough of that. Let's look at our final third attack. Um, 
Hmm, who is that? Let's take a look at a Magnus. People were excited about a Magnus's hit on his peer. It was a 9-5 on a 9-5. People were excited in that there was some fluke timing or switching that went on. I don't know if a Magnus would claim to have, here it is, I think, the one they liked. Yep, 11. I don't know if a Magnus will claim to have planned this out, but watch the movement of the healers. Uh, what I think is going to happen is something we used to see. I'll do it four times speed again. So the healers start with the queen, and this used to, be, used to be done actually at Town Hall 11 with the Infernos, is you would plan on the queen dying at a certain point and timing the movement of the second phase in their pathing such that they pass by the queen at that time when she dies, and then they switch over. Watch it not even do this switch over, but that's what the notes said. They said that uh, the queen actually swapped out. Now it looks like all the healers are going to die. What are they talking about? Okay, I have no idea. Maybe I'm not looking at the right one. A Magnus on 11. No? Who knows? Who knows? I don't know what they're talking about. So we'll just, we'll just say, Magnus, great job then. Makes me feel sad now. I thought I thought it was a healer switch, and I didn't get it. So now I'm going to have to look at it again and see. So he really doesn't, again, have much of anything. It's at Town Hall 10. He's got the two bows. I don't even see the bomb tower floating around. Pretty basic open with some healer wizards making the cuts. And he looks a lot like uh, Red Ace's attack when you actually look at it. You know, the, the Valk action with the Royal Bowler push. And then his queen and bowler strangely pushed out instead of in, and then he has a hog snipe, which is actually different than red aces, to clear the backside. So really it was a a whiz cut Valk Royal Bowler push to kind of get half the base, maybe half the base, and then they came back on the backside with a hog action. So good attack from a Magnus. Bonus round. Maybe we'll do a couple of bonus rounds because I had some that they kind of they they were all debating which one was better. Batman said that uh, people should be looking at this attack here. Uh, number twenty four seems to be, in Batman's opinion, an emerging the healer Pekka meta. It seems to be an emerging meta for Town Hall nine. So let's take a gander at this. Uh, it's Ellen, new member of JTJ or new relatively. Uh, versus some of the guys like me that have been around forever. But um, here we go. So it's Queen Walk. Maybe this was the one they were talking about where the switch occurred. I'm just going to keep hoping at some point it happens. And th there it is. Okay, that's the one they were talking about. So, and I don't know, as you look at this, this attack style, if that transfer of healers is critical. I doubt it. It's interesting, but I don't think it's really something that you can base a core attack style on but the you know having the queen healer and then the pekka's coming through to provide like guidance like make a cut because let's again look at how she flowed that the base itself is kind of also prone to a pekka movement because pekka's like bases that are open where they can walk what you don't want is pekka's locking up on a wall and then they're stuck there if they can just move from building to building and really lay down their heavy damage you know, there's single shot damage. They'll clear these channels really fast. Um, sorry, let's move this quicker. And so at this point, what do we got? We got a minor cut on the right and a major cut. Right, so the queen is basically, the queen walk has handled this. And I'm surprised that they didn't lose the uh, peckets to the right, but, you know, what... Ellen did there that was really nice is instead of placing on here she placed here and so the Pekka's went like this. So very small difference in tile placement, two tiles to the to the right here, enabled the flow of the Pekka's to move where she wanted. What she didn't want is to kind of have them swing here. She wants them to dive with the queen I'm assuming. Let's keep going. I'll clear off that arrow. And there they go into the mid right together like a happy family and then they dive together and or maybe maybe that is a strategy like they bring the queen to the pekkas and then the pekkas because they're going to be in front of the queen right ranging pekkas are hitting the w buildings right at the building queens five tiles back automatically the healers are going to swap into the pekkas because they're the ones taking damage 
So actually, I take what I said back earlier. It's not actually hard to plan. So the healer swap, basically, of the this queen walk to Pekka is pretty good when you think about it. Especially if you can figure out where this late stage, see the movement here probably wasn't what that was wanted. Probably was more and more like this. This guy gets a little bit more fun on the healers than she wanted. Take a watch of that. But not too much. Pretty good. And then the hog action off the backside. So yeah, I actually like this. This is my favorite attack now that I've watched it. I mean, the other ones were nice. I, I mean, Red Aces was pretty good. I mean, it's always any time you can see a uh, three-star at Town Hall nine dot, a nine hitting a nine dot five. That's good. But uh, this one I like. I like better in terms of like I think that strategy. Now that I understand the way the healers will uh, will switch to the Pekkas. So if you bring the Pekkas back to the healer with the queen. Because of the fact that they're in front and they're taking damage, it'll swap out, and then the queen can basically trail, which is what you want her to do. You want her to be trailing all that stuff and clearing. Interesting. I'll, I'll be interested to see more of that attack style. All right, were there any others that we want to take? I heard that Leia had a nice attack on a base, or Lee, L-E-A-H. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, and then Dirk had a nice hit on an asymmetrical AD base. Hmm. Dirk or Lee, Lee, Lee. Let's see. Let's do the highest one. We'll do Dirk. Or we'll just do them both. We'll do them both at four times speed, and then we'll be done. Here we go. One time through on each one. That is not the base that they were talking about. Dirk on nine. There's Lee's attack. Lee's attack is on ten. Well, we'll do hers then. Dirk on nine. Maybe there was a different attack for him. Here we go. So she is also Le is Leia is also I have to get somebody to tell me how the correct pronunciation of that is. Looks a lot very similar, right? Did you see that? Although it's not is it Pekka's? It is not. But similar opening in terms of the cut using the queen walk for the major cut on the side. Notice then we're using a king forward as I call it to uh, get the other cut established and then they drive in the core. Mm hmm Healers died. Probably didn't want that to happen. Although you would have expected it because that walk would move around and as as you move the queen would be like this. The healers would be trailing. As he turns in the healers will cut the corner and then in range. So it could have been anticipated that you're going to lose your healers and maybe there would have been something better to do with that dive a little earlier at the ADs I think but it worked so let us not judge all right we'll take one last scanner to see if we can see Dirk's attack otherwise we'll be done with this one a little longer than normal but fun war so and insightful around the new meta I thought Magnus last is Dirk oh there's Dirk all right let's do this one Asymmetrical ADs, yep, this is the one they wanted to talk about. So how does he take advantage of Of course, we're going to hit into that area. Probably it's going to be a 4Q. No, it's not. It's going to be a jump. But that does give him, that jump location gives him shot distance into this with his core team. Those bowlers tear it all up. And bam, there's nothing left to really stop air except for that one guy, and that's not enough. Pretty nice. So a nice recognition of that. And I like the usage of jump. I mean, a lot of people with the uh, air attacks use the 4Q for the initial entry of the Royals with Golems to kind of clear the ADs, as, you know, two or three, ideally. Um, but that's if you can get away with it on the jump like he did, then you should because that gives you an extra spell on the backside. More on that later. We are uh, having some research done by Woo Boy and others around the concept of skeleton troopers so we may be pushing something out on that as well and so I'll just keep you in suspense as Trump does till then alright guys good luck in your wars we'll talk to you later what am I gonna do my clan sucks hey it's JTJ uh I think that's an all out attack no no it's a legendary JTJU JTJU 
Clash of Clans for free. Then subscribe to JTJU and win.